express their feelings after this event is that they couldn't imagine it. Well, I certainly couldn't imagine it. My son and I talked about the idea of a parent losing a child. It never occurred to us it would happen to us. It never occurred to us that Gabe was in any danger. It My son and I talked about the idea of a parent losing a child. It My son and I talked about the idea of a parent losing a child. It It never occurred to us that Gabe was in any danger. It never occurred to us he would be the first congressional staff member in U.S. history to die in the line of duty in front of a Safeway. What is so hard about the idea of common sense, responsible behavior? What is so hard about banning something like this? This is a little piece of a much larger picture. I have plenty of friends who own guns. None of them think these things are reasonable. There is no rationality to this. This is something that must change. What is so hard about banning something like this? This is a little piece of a much larger picture. What is so hard about banning something like this? What is so hard about banning what is something so hard like this? about banning something like this? Gabe was a great man. There are many reasons I love Gabe. He was smart, funny, and outgoing. But what really drew me to him was that he knew what was important in life. He spoke with his parents, Emily and Ross Daly. He had a little brother that he adored. He made sure to tell me every day that he loved me. He died this way also, trying to protect his colleagues and others from a troubled individual who effortlessly and legally purchased magazines that allowed him to gun down so many people so quickly. The man who killed Gabe and five others shot 31 bullets in 15 seconds, roughly two shots every second. He stopped only when his high-capacity magazine was empty. He had two other high-capacity magazines with him that day. He was clearly planning on killing many more people. But thankfully, two brave people tackled the gunman and a fearless woman wrestled away one of the high capacity magazines he was trying to load into his gun. Those people saved a lot of lives. I do not own a gun, but I respect every American's constitutional right to have a gun. However, Every constitutional right comes with responsibility. What is so hard about banning something like this? 
I do not own a gun, but I respect every American's constitutional right to have a gun. However, every constitutional right comes with responsibility. What is so hard about banning something like this? What is so hard about banning something like this? It is entirely reasonable to limit gun magazines to 10 bullets, as Representative McCarthy and Senator Lautenberg are proposing. 10 bullets are more than enough for self-defense, which is why many people own a handgun. Extended magazines currently are easily accessible for troubled individuals who want to com commit mass murder. And that is what happened on January 8th, and that is how Gabe was killed. What is so hard about banning something what like this? What is so this? hard about banning something what like this? What is so this? hard about banning something what like this? What is so hard about banning something like this? You know, I, I, I issued a statement about uh, Christina's death not being uh, about Dallas Green, that it was about my son John and his family. And uh, uh, we, uh, we obviously didn't take a lot of calls that, that you guys and gals tried to reach out to us. and. I know you're doing your job, but at the same time, a lot of you were thinking about me and, and uh, Sylvia and my family, and I apologize for not getting back to you. And I want to thank uh, all of you for at least honoring the, the thought that I tried to, I tried to make was that, that uh, John and uh, Roxana and Dallas and Christina, uh, it was their family that that was hurt desperately in the tragedy, and uh, uh, I, I really appreciate your understanding and and your uh, your respect, and also your honoring uh, my wishes at that time. What is so hard about banning something like this? What is so hard about banning something like this? What is so hard about banning something like this? I'm the father of Gabriel Zimmer, who was one of the victims of the Tucson tragedy shooting 
On January 9th, 8th. On January 9th, 8th. On January 9th, 8th. On January 9th, 8th. I support legislation like this and other pieces of legislation that help promote responsible gun ownership in the United States. What is so hard about banning something like this? What is so hard about banning something like this? This is Julie, I believe, Michael's first wife. This is Toby sitting alongside of her, one of his daughters. Now you might recognize Julie. Julie also played one of the victims in the Giffords event, Dorothy Morris. And Toby's no stranger to the acting game. As you see Toby sitting here with her husband, Richard Katz. She also appears in the Pima books that we've been talking about. Now let's go back to Richard. Richard also plays a Giffords character. He plays the father of slain Gabe Zimmerman. Remember Gabe, the aide to Gifford? One of the things I hear most commonly from people who try to comfort me and express their feelings after... Listen how they use the event, event to push an agenda. They couldn't imagine it. Well, I certainly couldn't imagine it. What is so hard about the idea of common sense responsible behavior what is so hard about banning something like this this is a little piece of a much larger picture I have plenty of friends who own guns none of them think these things are reasonable and let's not forget about Gabe himself who's played by a cousin of theirs from the other side of the family which we'll get into in a little bit now wife number two for Michael is Myrna Commits. You may recognize Myrna from the Pima County books as well. She plays a character. But she also plays an even bigger character than that. You may recall that I mentioned Maurice had a daughter, Michael's sister. You may recognize her from the Pima catalog and from the recent Quartzite Jennifer Jones event. Now, wife number three, the current wife, Vicki Greenberg. Now, Vicki's father is somebody that you should know. If you think Maurice Greenberg is big, meet the other Maurice of the family. Maurice Strong, her father. If you don't know who Maurice is, you need to. Maurice, a CFR member, Trilateral Commission member, Bilderberg member, just to name a few. He's the one that invented, he is the creator of the carbon tax scheme. He's also in exile from Canada. He lives in Switzerland now with his wife. Here's a quote direct from Maurice that you should really consider when you think about this whole entire picture and what they're trying to do. He said, what if a small group of world leaders were to conclude that the principal risk to the earth comes from actions of the rich countries? And if the world is to survive, those rich countries would have to sign an agreement to reduce their impact on the environment. Will they do it? The group's conclusion is no. The rich countries won't do it. They won't change. So in order to save the planet, the group decides it's the only hope for the planet that the industrial civilizations collapse. Isn't it our responsibility to bring that about? When you put all the fake events that you see in the news in perspective with this comment, you see what they're trying to do. All the fake events are trying to either a push agenda when it comes to the guns or they're trying to remove civil liberties or they're trying to instigate and provoke the American public into reacting in a violent way against their leaders to overthrow the government like they probably did in Egypt and all the other countries that had all the civil unrest that we saw in recent years so Maurice Greenberg and Maurice Strong their whole entire families are taking an active role in bringing down this government they should be treated as terrorists, domestic terrorists, and anyone who helps them is complicit treated as terrorists as well. well I Remember I mentioned the, the nurse Nairo story that, with the incubators that got us into the war? Understand this, Tony and Anne's friend, they nicknamed her Chi Chi, her mother is Lori Fitzpagato. 
Lori Fitzpagato is the person that invented that whole campaign with the nurse Nairu. Now, Lori Fitzpagato is also a Trilateral Commission member, a CFR member, and is very close associates, of course, with this whole entire family, as we see with these photographs. Now, understand that these photographs are of this entire family, the Greenbergs, Katz, Harmons, and Bloombergs, over in Israel during June 13th through the 17th of 2008. It just so happens that Lori Fitzpagato, who is now a honorable Lori Fitzpagato, she is a lobbyist, and the recent list that just came out shows her and almost every government official that she's lobbying for in the Middle East supposedly talking to Libya while at the same time this family is in Israel. Now like I said that might be a coincidence unless you knew that that nurse Nairu is part of this family. This is the Wohl family, W-O-H-L. That's Denise in the center and standing next to her is her daughter Arden. Denise's sister is Vicki Greenberg. Arden is the one that played the character of Nurse Nairu. So you can understand and you can see the connection between the media, the fake events, and this family and how influential they are and how far-reaching they are when it comes to the mainstream media. Another tool you can use with this upcoming election and to see what's going to happen is OpenSecrets.org or CampaignMoney.com, which this site is here. You'll be able to see who these people are actually putting their money behind and you'll be able to watch them as they promote and push them on their different networks and different uh, blogs that they have and media out outlets that they, they own and operate. So you can see here clearly that Maurice is backing Mitt Romney for president. So you can tell that the CFR, Trilateral Commission, they're going to be backing him. So watch for him to make some moves soon. But until the elections take place, they will continue with their fake media creations in an attempt to provoke the population into acting out and causing civil unrest to bring this country to its knees. So don't let it happen. Don't fall for their gambit and make sure that you use peaceful non-compliance as your weapon. Considering the fact that all of our officials have made comments as to working with Gabby, knowing Gabby, been around her when she was trying to heal, they're all frauds. They're all lying. They're all lying. They know exactly who she is. They know what she is. Considering the fact that all of our officials have made comments as to working with Gabby, knowing Gabby, been around her when she was trying to heal, they're all frauds. They're all lying. They're all lying. They know exactly who she is. They know what she is. This short video is designed as a tool for you to use to show individuals who are not awake. Loved ones, friends, relatives, people who you want them to understand what you see, but they just don't seem to get it. It's their first step with this video on a journey that you've already taken, possibly. Show them this video and see how they react to it, and you'll be able to gauge and tell where they're at in their journey to become awake. I want you to remember the Gabrielle Giffords shooting in the parking lot of the Safeway. You remember the media has told us that Jared Loeffner, single gunman, opened fire, shooting Gabrielle Giffords in the head, causing a through wound of the head from a 9mm hollow tipped round. That wound would have been pretty extensive. Now, the individual, Gabe Hernandez, is credited with saving her life. He was an aide of Gifford and happened to be there at the time and recalls quickly reacting after the gunshots and pulling her body upright against his chest so she wouldn't choke on the blood. 
and he applied direct pressure with his bare hands until the EMTs got there. Now, the photograph that you might recall has Daniel alongside of a stretcher and he's holding the hand of a person that's laying on that stretcher. The EMTs are at both ends and they're escorting her to the emergency room or to the ambulance. I want you to look at that photograph very closely. Do you notice anything that's missing? If you've ever seen a head wound or a head trauma, you understand how much the head bleeds. There's no blood. Also, if you'll notice under the small rag that's on her face with a little couple drops of red blood on it, you'll notice that person has short hair. Now that's besides the fact that there is no blood on Daniel, on his hands, his clothes, on EMT's gloves, stretcher, hands, clothes, anywhere except for that little rag on her face to cover her face up. That's because it's an actor underneath there and that's because this was a drill. Now at this point you see that you've been lied to. Everything beyond this point when it pertains to this event, say Jared Loeffner, Pima County College, all his friends, all these stories that you heard were lies. They are created to instill this image to make your perception of reality not what it really is. You can see without the blood this is not consistent with anything even close to what would be considered a head trauma. If you don't believe me, go ask an EMT. Go ask a nurse. Go ask a doctor. Ask anyone who's worked in the emergency room. They'll tell you. So now that you have taken your first steps to becoming awake, every time that you hear the Gabriel Gifford story told on the news, or you see somebody referring to it in reference to a murder, you know that they are lying. They are either lying or they are misinformed and they are clueless to the facts. You now know the facts. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Understand that once you become awake and start taking that step towards being aware, you're going to take an emotional roller coaster ride. It's going to start with anger or denial and anger, and you're going to go into shock and just in absolute awe, and just, and then you'll go into an anger phase where you can't believe that they've done this to you for so long. That everything that you believed, every foundation that you've based your opinions, your, your morals, your sense of who you are on has been a lie. You'll get angry, but then you'll realize that you'll get an overwhelming feeling of happiness as you realize that this world is a much better place than they've tricked us into believing it was. And then you'll feel a surge of energy and you want to get the word out and you want to show this video to more and more people and you want them to become awake. But remember, it's not for everybody. A lot of people will still have that wall put up and they will not, even if you show them the facts, they will not accept those facts. That's because they're not ready yet. They will be though. It just takes time.